Good morning, Destiny Travelers. Welcome to Wow in Root Empowerment. I'm Sherry Downs. I am a life coach, an author, a speaker, and I want to empower you while you're walking out your journey. So today I want to talk about Today I want to talk about why you struggle in your born identity. Why you struggle in your born identity. As I begin to sit with the Holy Spirit, he began to give me this topic to share today because there are so many individuals that are struggling in their God ordained identity or simply they're struggling to embrace who God has called them to be and what God has called them to do. There's a struggle there and the Lord doesn't want us to struggle in the things that are freely given unto us through Christ Jesus and achieved by the Holy Spirit. So I want to highlight some things today for our destiny travelers, those of you that are um, ordained to walk in this life and who have a desire to fulfill their to fulfill your destiny, to actualize your dreams, to become the highest version of yourself that God may get the glory through your story. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. I also want to invite you to our empowerment conference, our women's empowerment conference, Women of Weight, April 28th through the 29th in Hyatt, in Deerfield, Illinois, at the Hyatt Regency in Deerfield. You are invited for the information for the WOW Conference, Women of Weight. You can go to www.touchdownsenterprise.com. Let's get into it. So I began to sit with the Holy Spirit and he began to just share with me about our born identity and why so many individuals struggle in their God ordained identity. Why we're seeing so many people with the imposter syndrome. So many people are looking for their identity. People want to be seen, people want to be known, and people want to be believed in. But there is a gap between coming into God and actualizing the God ordained you that God designed for you to be. And there are so many individuals that are walking in the earth that never actualized dreams, never wrote the book, never did the play, never allowed the creativity of God to flow through them in such a way that God's manifested will for their lives begin to be manifested. A lot of new age terms we see on the rise, manifesting your dreams. Well, in the kingdom of God, when we walk in our identity and when we walk in who God has commissioned us to be, we began to actualize those things that are a part of our identity, the gifts, the talents, the things that God placed in us before the foundation of the world, the treasure that's locked inside our earthen vessels. We came to earth with everything that we need to fulfill our assignment. Type in the comments, I have everything I need. When you look at an apple seed, that apple seed is not an apple tree. But that apple seed has everything in it to become that flourishing apple tree that provides for many individuals that will come and pull from that tree. But the thing is, Yolanda, that apple seed has to get into the right hands in order for it to be planted in the right place and receive the right nutrients it needs in order to flourish. Type in the comments, I need to be in the right hands. So that apple seed has everything within it to actualize the identity in which it is intended for. What is an apple seed supposed to do? 
It's supposed to be planted and it's supposed to grow to the degree that it provides many apples for those that would desire to come eat from its substance. You and I have an identity that is rich in Jesus Christ. And we came to the earth as a seed. Type in the comments, I am a seed. Today, I am talking about why you struggle in your born identity. Why are you struggling and you have everything that you need? Why are you struggling to become that flourishing tree that expresses all the gifts, the talents, and the abilities that are on the inside of you? I want to invite you now to share this video to somebody that you know that needs to hear this message. Share it to your timeline, share it to your networks, and share it to your friends. So just like that apple seed, you have an identity that you don't have to struggle because in the word of God, we have everything that we need. We have been given everything that we need pertaining to life in godliness. Everything you need to succeed, Dr. Neal, is on the inside of you. Everything that you need to succeed, Christina, is on the inside of you. Everything that you need to succeed is already locked inside of you. What you have to do is get in the right hands. Mm, my God today. So if I put an apple seed in the hands of a toddler, if I put an apple seed in the hands of a businessman, they may not know what to do with that apple seed because they have not been trained proper, properly on what to do. But if I put that apple seed in the hands of a farmer, an apple tree farmer, somebody that grows apple seeds, somebody that knows how to nourish apple seeds, somebody that knows how to cultivate apple seeds, somebody that knows how to put an apple seed in the right soil, when to water an apple seed, what type of fertilized apples, uh, apple trees grow in, how to take that seed to the next stage in order to bring it to its fullness, to its fullest potential, to become a flourishing tree that many can pull from its substance that other seeds branch off of one seed. Type in the comments, I have potential. You have to know that in your unique born identity, you have the greatest potential known to man because you have the seed of God in you. Type in the comments, I have God's seed. So last week, uh, we talked about in Friday's video, and if you have not looked at Friday's video, I want to invite you to go look at Friday's video. The video in last week, we were talking about being an agent, being a in the God family. Now you have a new DNA. You have a new family that you belong to. You are no longer a double agent. You are in the family of God. You are the seed of God. You belong to the family, the household of faith. You belong to the kingdom of God. You have been translated out of darkness and into the marvelous light. But here's this one thing, Yolanda. A lot of people, when they are translated out of darkness into the marvelous light, they're like, now what? In the world, I had this identity. In the world, I was doing this and I had my hands on that. I had this career. Now that I have this new life, now that I have all things new, now that I have a new lease on life, I have a new perspective. I belong to a new family. I'm supposed to see things in a new ordained way. What do I do? Who am I in this new life? So the important thing is to connect individuals to Christ. Type in the comments, connect me to Christ. When we connect people to Christ, they began to join in a relationship. He says, I am the potter. 
You are the clay. I am the vine dresser. I am the gardener. I am the one that is going to dung you. I am the one that's going to cultivate you. I am the one that's going to mature you. I am the one that's going to make you and mold you. Just like that apple seed needs to be cultivated in the hands of an apple farmer or a fruit farmer or somebody that uh, grows tr apple trees. We too have to be connected to Christ. We have to be connected to the vine to begin to receive everything that is locked inside of us so that we can uncover the beauty of who he has called us to be. First John chapter five talks about um, being born into Christ. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Type in the comments, my born identity. You have a new identity when you are born into Christ. If you are doing things the same way you did in the world, if you haven't grown and matured, if you haven't seen different gifts, talents, abilities come out of you, I have to um, ask the question of you, are you connected to Christ? Are you journeying with Christ in such a way so he can begin to point out what he placed on the inside of you? There is treasure in an earthen vessel. You should start to do new things, experience new things. New things should be coming out of you when you are connected to your born identity. Type in the comments, I have a new identity. So in Jesus Christ, when we believe on Jesus, we are born of God. And everyone who loves the father loves his children as well. So we have a new identity and we start to experience a love for God. We start to experience a love for the brotherhood. We talked about that Friday. Go back and watch that video. We start to feel a love when we meet brothers and sisters in Christ is as if we're meeting family. There is no separation in the realm of the spirit. I feel like we are sisters. I feel like we've known each other for years. Why? Because we do in the realm of the spirit. You have to begin to be a believer who no longer adheres to the carnal nature, but you become a believer who walks in the spirit, being born of God, loving and knowing the father and his children. Type in the comments, I know God. This is how we know that we love this is how we know that we love the children of God by loving God and carrying out his commands for everyone born of God overcomes the world. Here it is. What is the first step in my identity? How I should look. Your identity is unique to your DNA, your family of origin. My God. So my, my identity, my physical identity begins to look like Annie and Willis mixed together. I start to look like those that I come from. I may look like an auntie, I may look like an aunt, but I'm looking like the family that I was born into. So my identity begins to be shaped by the coming, the, the mixing and molding of chromosomes and hormones and DNA character traits. I start to look like and act like what I come from. But when we are translated out of darkness, out of the carnal world and into the family of God. When we are born again, we are no longer the seed of Adam. Though in our flesh, we have on this fleshly suit, but inwardly in our spirit, we are connected to God through Christ Jesus. And we become born again through Christ Jesus. And we start to take on a new identity. We start to take on new character traits. We start to take on new mindsets. We start to take on, we start to look brighter. Our countenance starts to change. We start to look like our father. We take on his temperament. We take on his disposition. We start to have a new identity. We start to love people that we've never met before, simply because they are connected in the spirit 
We start to love the, the things of God, the commands of God, the will of God. We want to help God's agenda in the earth any way we can. We want to get behind a movement of God. We want to experience God. We start to love everything that God is. I'm not talking about devoted to man, and we're going to talk about that too, but I'm just talking about your entrance and your love affair and your believing on God. God through Christ Jesus. You start to want to put your hands to the kingdom plow. You start to want to do anything that you can help God's agenda. Why? Because I am overcoming the world. I am connected to a new family. I have found a new lease on life. So you don't have that identity that you used to have. So people People want to be seen, known, and believed in. People want to be seen. People want to be known. People want to be believed in. They want somebody to say, hey, I see you. I recognize who you are in this ministry. I recognize who you are in the body of Christ. You are known. You are seen. You are known intimately. We just don't see you, but we know you. We see your heart posture. We see what you're doing. We see your endeavors. We see you trying. We see you pushing. We see you giving. And people want to be believed in. When somebody has a dream in their heart, when somebody is trying to go a new direction, they want others to come alongside them and begin to believe in what they carry. Believe in that dream that's in their heart. Believe that they can live righteous and holy. Believe in them going in to college and coming out successfully. Believe in their business idea. Believe in them. People want to be seen, known, and believed in. But I want to tell you, your identity is born out of your intimacy with the Father and what he has placed in you. Your identity is born out of intimacy. Type in the comments, I need to be intimate. You need to begin to be intimate with Jesus Christ. You got to know him. When you begin to journey and know Christ Jesus, you begin to know who you are in this world and you begin to receive your unique identity, your unique DNA in the family of God. He starts to position you. He starts to tell you who you are. He starts to tell you your positioning in the body of Christ. He starts to tell you what gifts, talents, abilities, are locked on the inside of you. He starts to empower you to do things that you didn't do before in the world, in your carnal life. When you were living alienated from him, he starts to begin to give you task assignments. He starts to pull on your faith so you can pull out those things that are on the inside of you. So you need to become intimate with Christ Jesus. Why do I need to become intimate? You need to become intimate intimate in a way that you get to know him in such a way that is close. Intimacy is a closeness. Intimacy is a place of secrecy. Intimacy is a place of walking with somebody in a close-knit way, in a very intimate way. So for, uh, John chapter 1 verse 12 says, but to who but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. So when I believe on Jesus Christ, when I step into the body of Christ, I have been given a right of passage. I have been given a stamp of approval. I have been given a closeness and and access to him to not only step into the new family of God, but I have the right, I have the authority, I have the access to become children of God. So when we become 
children of God. We step into a new family of origin. Origin. We have new brothers and sisters. We walk in a new way. We experience things in a new and tangible way. So we have now in our new identity, we have access to intimacy. We have access to a new family. And now we become children. I have a right to be his child. My God, today, all I got to do is believe on him. All I got to do is understand what Jesus Christ did for me by suffering, by coming to the earth, suffering and dying, becoming intimate, intimate with him, believing on him, not just in head knowledge. When my belief is, is, is real, I start to change my action according to what I believe. My belief is not just head knowledge. Okay, I know we just celebrated Easter. We celebrated Easter because a whole lot of people believe, but not a lot of people will act on what they believe. Type in the comments, believe and act. They go hand in hand. You cannot believe without action. You cannot believe without doing something. You cannot believe without actions behind it. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart, when something is believed in your heart, it changes your actions. You become devoted to it. You become one that gives your money to it. When you believe in a cause, when you believe in your child, you're going to put your money behind your child's academic career. You're going to put your money behind their athletic career. Why? Because I believe and I act. It's not enough just to tell somebody, I believe in you. But what are you doing behind your beliefs? What are you doing behind what's in your head? Has what's in your head gotten in your heart? So when something is believed in the heart, the heart causes everything else to fall in alignment with what you believe. So where our heart is, that's where our treasures, that's where the things that we value go to, where our heart believes in. So where, if our heart is invested in God, everything that we treasure, our time, our talent, our resources is going to be given to the thing that we believe in. So identity is who you are. We talked about this last week. We are in the family of God. Your identity is who you are. Your identity is based upon your, not your, your carnal DNA, but now your identity is based upon what a son of God looks like. What does it look like to be in the family of God? What does it look like? So Jesus as our model is the one that we begin to look to. And we understand this. Now that Jesus Christ is ascended, he sent back the person of the Holy Spirit in his stead, like he walked with the disciples. Holy Spirit is able to walk with us. So it's something when we claim the identity of God without, here it is, the representation of God. You cannot claim identity of God and not look like God. My children can claim identity to me and my husband because they look like us. My God, when they go out and people know us, they're going to know our children. They're going to know that you're Sylvester's son, you're Sherry's daughter. Why? Because they carry our attributes. They carry our DNA. They carry our characteristics. They look like us. So when you identify with the family of God, when you identify with God, people are going to say, why are you so patient? People are going to say, why, why didn't you get upset with me? They're going to wonder, why aren't you treating me like somebody else treated me? Why aren't you getting upset at how long this is taking? Why did you take that cart and put it back in the stalls and not just throw it? Why did you give a higher tip? Why did you come back in the store and say the cashier forgot to... Um, scan my waters. Why did you do that noble thing? Why did you do that holy thing? Why did you do that good thing? Why did you alleviate my stress in that area? Why did you send 
up a hundred dollars to my cash app. Why did you do those things? It's because I have a new family and I am directed by the DNA of my father. Come on. I want to look like him in public. I don't want to be somebody that, uh, uh, privately puts on a show or publicly puts on a show and walk in two different identities who you are in private when you are in the family of God you want to be that same way in public you don't want to be a double agent in your identity you want to have an identity in private that you carry in public you want people to say in your family of origin she was kind to me she helped me she sold in to me. She gave me a word. You want the, the family of origin to see what the family in, in public sees. So another thing, when we are in our identity, we don't receive uh, affirmation from man. When we struggle in our identity, in our born identity, we struggle because we don't receive God's affirmation. It's not enough for us. We want the affirmation to come from man. We want to be affirmed by our fathers, our mothers, our pastors, our sisters, our brothers. All of that is good and perfect in his place, but all things pertaining to life and godliness come from God. Everything that we need comes from the father. He is our source. So when we struggle in our born identity, we're going to struggle because we want people to affirm us and we don't receive God's affirmation. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. I have to begin to look to Jesus, who is the author. He started this thing in you. He started it out. He began it. He's the one that draw you, drew you unto himself through the Holy Spirit. Looking unto Jesus. Keep looking to Jesus. Yes, we have the fivefold giftings. We have the apostle, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, um, uh, the prophet. We have the fivefold giftings. But the fivefold giftings who are to equip the body through Jesus Christ, achieved by the Holy Spirit, they too are looking unto Jesus. So as you look unto Jesus, he will give the fivefold giftings the very thing that you need. Don't begin, don't Focus your attention on man. Focus your attention and look on to Jesus. We struggle in our identity and who we are in God when we look to man to affirm us. Jesus says this, I am the author of your faith. I'm the one that started this thing in you. I'm the one that's going to finish it. It talks. It says, for who the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Here it is. When we look to Jesus, he will start a work. He will finish a work. He'll awaken your calling. He'll help you write that book. He'll help you start that business and he'll finish this thing out. He's going to give you a vision. He's going to give you something to look forward to. He's going to give something before you. He's going to say there's more for you and he's going to place it before you. And he is the one that's going to give you everything you need pertaining to life and godliness. Type in the comments. I'm looking to Jesus now. I'm looking to Jesus now. I'm no longer going to regard human flesh. Yes, we, we uh, receive from people through Christ achieved by the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that speaks through man unto you. When you look unto Jesus, everything you need will flow through the equipping gifts. But when you look to a person, you will receive pain. Come on. You'll receive disappointment.
But when you begin to go before the throne of God, when you begin to tell God your needs, when you begin to tell God and cast every care upon him, he'll begin to touch hearts. He'll give that equipping gift, everything you need, the understanding that you need, the knowledge that you need. He'll begin to send angels to deliver messages for you. He'll begin to put you on people's hearts to be a financial blessing. He will begin to sow a uh, uh a word of encouragement. Come on, looking unto Jesus now. I'm not looking. Yes, I'm, I honor the apostles. I honor the prophets. I honor the evangelists. I respect them. We need them. I wouldn't have got to this place in my life without the equipping gifts. They have pushed me. They have spoken to me by Christ Jesus, achieved by the Holy Spirit. I bless them. I honor them. I sow into them. I support the fivefold giftings, but we cannot replace them for who Jesus is. When we came into the body, we were connected to Christ Jesus. So you struggle in your identity when you are connected to individuals instead of Christ. So in Matthew chapter 11, Verse 27, he says, Jesus tells us the things which he has seen from the father. Capture this, my God. All things are delivered unto me of my father. And no man knoweth the son, but the father. Neither knoweth any man the father save the son. And he to whomever the son will reveal him. So this is what I, I, I got in my sanctified imagination, Jacqueline. My God, today, type in the comments. You got to see it. Did you share this live? Did you share this to your timeline? Share it to your network. Invite somebody on. Send it to someone's inbox. I believe it will bless them. So Matthew 11 and 27, Jesus is saying, everything that I get about you, Yolanda, Everything that I tell you, Jacqueline, everything I say about you, Isa, comes directly from the Father, who is the source. Because of the reconciliation of Jesus, because of what Jesus did on the cross, everything passes through him. We got to see this in the realm of the spirit. Everything passes through Jesus and he reveals them to us. Sometimes it's revealed by way of prophecy. Sometimes it's revealed by way of illumination. Sometimes it's revealed when Sherry Downs comes on while in root empowerment and encourages the destiny travelers. Sometimes it's revealed as illumination. When you're reading the word of God, a, a verse will stick out and Jesus is revealing something to you by the Holy Spirit. So everything that's pertaining to life and godliness comes from God, who is the source. In the triune God, we have God the Father, we have God the Son, we have God the Holy Spirit. And God the Father is the source of everything, my God. And in order for us to connect with the source, we needed a intercessor. We needed somebody to bridge the gap. We needed somebody to bring us back into right standing, righteousness, reconciliation with God. Type in the comments, thank God for Jesus. So Jesus said, I am the go-between. I am the one who is standing in the gap. I am the one that's pleading on your behalf to the father. I am your intercessor. So he says, everything that I get, and, and this is how I see it in, the, in, my, in, my, in my sanctified imagination. I see them passing the message. <laughs> And, and this is what I see when I get up in the mornings for prayer. I have a conference call with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is on the phone with Jesus and Jesus is on the phone with the father. But nothing gets lost in translation. My God, Jesus, Jesus, they're not like man <laughs> because they walk in truth. Right. So I am in conference with the Holy Spirit, um, expressing myself, telling my needs to him. Right. Not 
He's not far away because the Holy Spirit lives in me. So I'm having a, a morning conference call, a morning audience with the triune God through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one that helps me to achieve what I hear from Jesus. He translates what Jesus says to me. And what I hear, Holy Spirit's job is to help me achieve it. He helps me achieve it by bringing destiny connection. He helps me to achieve it by bringing coaches and mentors my way to empower me to carry out my assignment, to start the business, to break the generational curse, to overcome warfare, to overcome those things that the enemy has sent my way, to stop me from walking in my born identity. Type in the comments, I am new. You are new in Christ Jesus. For any man, it for if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. He is an upgrade class of being. He goes from being dead in sin, dead in trespasses, alienated from God, not able to connect with God to a upgraded being with the Holy Spirit of promise and the nature of Christ living on the inside of him. He becomes one that is empowered and, and has grace to do supernatural things, things that the world cannot understand, things that you cannot carry out in your carnal flesh. So he gives good affirmation when we look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, he will begin to affirm us. A lot of people fail to go in their gifting and their callings. A lot of people don't step into who they've call, been called to be. A lot of people don't embrace the prophetic, don't embrace the apostolic calling, don't embrace their gifts, talents, and abilities. Why? Because somebody hasn't affirmed them. My God. So, 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 so people are looking for affirmation because people want to be seen. They want to be known. They want to be believed in, right? So when you begin to receive affirmation from God, affirmation is, according to Google, listen here, the action or process of affirming something, mm, my God or being affirmed by something established as true, authenticated, emotional support or encouragement. Type in the comments, affirm me God. Mm, mm, this is so good to me. Affirm me God. I'm finding out that we have a, ch a whole lot of people in the body of Christ that are flocking to churches every Sunday and every week unaffirmed. And it should not be so. Why? Because we have everything we need pertaining to life and godliness found in God. When I am not affirmed in my gifting, when I am not affirmed in my prophetic dreams and visions, and when I am not affirmed, Bridget, in those things that are supernatural on my life, those things that I understand have been given to me by God, when I am not infirmed in my uh, uh, interpretation of scripture and the things that I know God is saying and doing, I can suffer, my God, and I can experience where I am not established. I then feel rejected. I feel like I don't have a place. I don't feel firm and confident in who my who I am in my new identity. So it's important for us to look to Jesus because just like he walked with the disciples, the Holy Spirit is here to walk with you. He is here to affirm you in who you are. He is here to affirm you and who he called you to be. He is here to affirm you in your unique calling giftings, talents, abilities. He's here to pull out everything that is on the inside of you so you can be established in him, so you can be rooted in him, so you can be grounded in him, so you can know who you are as it relates to the global body of Christ, as it relates to the kingdom of God. You know your position. You know what you're supposed to do. You know what you're supposed to carry out. You know when God speaks to you. You know when God moves upon you. You, you know who you are. Type in the comments, I know who I am. So affirmation holds within itself 
emotional support and encouragement. What does affirmation look like? Emotional support and encouragement. When we are connected to God and when we don't look to man, hmm, type in the comments, if this is blessing you, type this is blessing me. Type this is blessing me. If it's blessing you, share the video. Invite somebody on. So when we lack emotional support or encouragement, we don't begin to be rooted, come on, and established. But that root, that emotional support and encouragement comes from God. He gives that to you. Did you know that? He affirms you in this way. You don't have to receive it from a carnal man. Now we got to understand when God speaks because God will also speak through man. But you got to know where the source is. All good things flow from the father. Every good and perfect gift comes from the father above. There is nothing good in this earthen vessel. Come on. In my flesh, Paul says, dwelleth no good thing. So when good things come to our lives, it is a, 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 an expression to us from the father. Type in the comments, he's a good father. When you know you're connected to him by virtue of Christ Jesus, achieved by the Holy Spirit, you begin to be one that can be rooted in your identity. You begin to be one that is in the family of God. We talked about that Friday. If you did not watch that video, I'm going to need you to backtrack and watch that video talking about coming into the family of God. And when you come into the family of God, you have to begin to embrace your uniqueness. Don't look at other people's giftings. Keep your face focused on Jesus Christ so he can begin to pull out everything that's on the inside of you. We talked about the seed and the seed having all of it, all of what it needs to become an apple tree. You, Yolanda, have everything you need to flourish. What we've got to do is get you in the right hands, get you in the right soil, get you in the right place to receive the nourishment, to receive the encouragement, to receive the emotional support, to receive everything that you need so you can be rooted and established. That tree before it bears fruit has to be rooted. Why does it have to be rooted, Yolanda? It has to be rooted to carry the weight of the fruit. My God. That tree is going to sprout out branches. That tree is going to bear fruit and it's going to be heavy. So that tree has to begin to be established and take roots. Type in the comments, I'm going deeper. You got to go deeper in Christ. You got to go deeper in understanding Christ. You got to go deeper in understanding and expressing God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, knowing how to get what you need from the three, knowing how to walk with them and position them and approach the throne of grace, knowing what you are doing in the realm of the Spirit. When you pray, you know you're having a conference call with the Holy Spirit. You know that Holy Spirit is uh, delivering the message to Christ. You know that Christ is delivering the message to God. And when they answer you, the message is coming from God through Christ Jesus to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Ghost is the one that is empowering you to walk that thing out. Type in the comments, I'm walking it out now. Now that I know I'm walking this thing out, now that I have understanding, I'm going deeper. Now that I know what God is telling me, I'm taking this thing to the next level. I'm going to bear fruit. I'm going to take deeper roots. I'm going to be established. I don't have to look to man because God is the one that will give me the emotional support. He will give me the encouragement. He will send encouragers for the encourager. So emotional support, guys, my God. Type in the comments, fire. If this is fire to you, type fire. Emotional support is showing care. Listen to this. It's showing care and compassion for another person. My God. It can be verbal or nonverbal. It may include actions such as helping a person call a therapist, or giving a hug to a friend that's crying. Emotional support can help a person cope with their emotions and experiences and 
also show them that they are not alone. Okay, guys, let's, let's break this down. When God gives you emotional support, I've been there. Have you ever needed emotional support? And God began to speak a word to say, it's all right. I got you. <laughs> My God, when, when, when you needed emotional support, God sent a friend. God had a friend call you. God had somebody praying for you. Emotional support is showing care and compassion. So when we are connected to God, when we are looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, we begin to receive from the vine. We begin to receive that affirmation because he knows, because we're connected to him. If the, the branch is um, suffering, if the branch, branch needs nourishment, the vine is going to send everything thing that that branch needs to stay connected. It's going to send compassion. It's going to send attention and care. The vine is going to send the nutrients and the substance that that branch needs in order to survive. So when we um, are simply giving somebody space to talk, that's emotional support. And we find that in prayer. When we're listening and we know how people are feeling, that's emotional support. Uh, emotional support can be really helpful in itself. If somebody is finding it difficult, uh, we got to let them know that we're here when they are ready. And that's what Christ does for us. We can go to him in prayer and we can tell him all of our burdens. We can tell him everything that's hurting us. We cast every care upon. Are y'all seeing this? Type in the comments. I see it now. We begin to cast every care upon God. We begin to simply walk with him. Get, he gives us space to mourn. He told uh, 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 Samuel. He told Samuel when Samuel was grieving over what Saul did and how Saul lost the kingdom, God gave Samuel a space to mourn. He gave Samuel a space to talk that thing out. He gave Samuel a space to cry about the situation. He listened to how Samuel was feeling. And he said when it was time to move on to achieve God's will, he said, okay, you got to stop crying over Saul. I, we, we rejected him. We got to keep moving. So he'll also help you get back up. He'll give you the words of affirmation to say, I see your pain. I see your hurt. We can no longer mourn over that. He gave him space to do that. So types of emotional support is expressing expressions of empathy, love, trust, and caring, instrumental, tangible aid and service. God does that for us. God does all of these things for us. This is in affirmation. When you are being affirmed of God, this, what, this is what it looks like. Um, advice, suggestions, and information. He sends the right information. He suggests ideas. He suggests pathways. He gives you blueprints, appraisal, information that is useful for self-evaluation. He starts to tell you, well done, good and faithful servant. He starts to say, I'm so proud of you. He starts to send scriptures that encourage you and lift you up. So encouragement is the action of giving someone support, confidence, or hope. God is giving you hope. God is giving you, we're talking about being affirmed in our identity as sons and daughters, being affirmed in our callings, being affirmed in our giftings, being affirmed in our direction, being affirmed as a son or a daughter of the most high God. Listen, the enemy is going to try to convince you and tell you all day long that you are not good enough, that you missed the mark. None of us have arrived to the day we die. We're still at the mercy of God. We're still at the cross of Christ asking for help, asking for um, a mercy, asking for his grace, asking for him to help us. Why? Because maturity in God is full dependence upon 
Holy Spirit. When we have full dependence on the power and empowering and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we have arrived to a place of maturity. Why? Because we're like Jesus then. I do nothing except I, I see my father do it. Except my father says this. I don't want to do anything that he doesn't want me to do. I don't want to do anything that's out of, out of alignment with his will. Everything that I want to do, I want it to come from the father. Did you like this video? Did you share it to your timeline? Did you share it to your network? Did you share it to a friend? So we're growing in our identity. We're growing as mature sons and daughters. We're receiving affirmation. We're receiving our position as sons and daughters. We're accepting Christ Jesus and not the flesh. We're accepting Jesus Christ and not people, not positions, not the fivefold giftings. Yes, we accept them in their a uh, uh, posture and in their positioning and in their uh, office and in their mantles. Yes, we embrace them because we respect them as being who they are in the body. I'm a part of the fivefold, but I don't want you to exalt me above Christ. Looking on to Jesus and Jesus will give me what you need. Amen. So when we receive the in action of support, confidence or hope, persuade this is encouragement persuasion to do or continue in something persuasion to do or continue in something the act of trying to stimulate the development of an activity state or belief here it is when god is encouraging you he's telling you keep going don't stop that's the thing that you're supposed to be doing. You're good at that. He is persuading you to continue in God. This video is encouragement to say, keep going after your identity. Keep growing in God. Reconnect to Christ. Look onto Jesus. It is persuading you to continue in or do something. It's the act of trying to stimulate the development of an activity. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to stimulate you to embrace your identity in God. Look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Receive everything from the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus from the Father. My God. So God is such a good father that he will affirm you by giving you emotional support and encouragement through any situation. The things that you face when you stay connected to God, when you stay connected to the vine, when you connect to him and not people. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When you say, God, everything flows from you. Everything I need, you got it. He will send the right people and you value those people, right? Because he sent them. You value those he sends in your life. You value people, period. But especially when they are sent by God. When you tell God what's, what you need and people show up. When you tell God, help me, I'm all alone. And he sends people to your aid. That is God answering you. That is God affirming you. That is God hearing your cry. So he sends that emotional support, encouragement in every situation you find yourself in. You receive your unique identity. You struggle because you're looking to man. You struggle because you don't know who you are in Christ and you are not connected to Christ. And you struggle because you fear man instead of fearing the Lord. Type in the comments. Fear the Lord, ye his saints. The fear, the Bible tells us the fear of man ensnares you. Now here it is. It is the value, importance, and respect of people that you value more than you do God. <clears throat> what am I saying? When we value the voice and opinions of others more than the voice and opinion of man, God does not have final authority in our lives. What God says is second uh, fiddle to what people say. We value how we look to people. We value what people say about what God says. If God says you're doing great and people say you're doing bad, 
You value what they say above what God says. If God says you are my daughter and people tell you you're not saved, you value them. You value people telling you you're not good enough. And God says, I made you perfect, perfectly. I created you. I ordained you. I chose you. I want to use you. I called you out of darkness. You value your experiences with people more than you value your experiences with God. So when you fear, man, it ensnares you. And that word ensnares, it is like a noose that ties around your neck. And that individual, that situation, those people are able to drag that noose around. Why? Because you're tied to them. You're at their mercy. They can hang you. They can drag you wherever they want you to go. Why? Because you value what man says above what God says. You can never be rooted in your identity in God. And you have an allegiance and a fear of man above the uh, allegiance and fear of the Lord, the respect of God, the reverence for God, the deep awe of God, the even fear God. Lord, you so big. I don't want to cross you. God, you so big. I don't want the scriptures. Are, it's, it's, it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. God still gets angry. A lot of people um, uh, lean towards the mercy of God and Jesus Christ. He still judges. He still hates sin, hates divorce. Things are still an abomination unto him. He's a God that he doesn't change. He's just long suffering now through Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit. He's just given us, uh, uh, he has more mercy. <laughs> His mercy is put in place so that he doesn't have to kill us off. <laughs> so you embrace the rejection of man instead of the validation of God as a daughter or a son of God. Rejection kills Sonship, type that in the comments. Rejection kills sonship. When I value man's voice above God, I then become rejected. I become abandoned. I become lost because I don't know who I am in the kingdom of God. And then I start to live as a double agent. Because you cannot fear God and fear man at the same time. The fear of man is a snare. The fear of man is a snare. I respect man, but I place God above man. Okay, so Proverbs chapter 14, verse 27 says, the fear of the Lord, the reverence of God, the reverence for the Lord, listen, Yolanda, is a fountain of life, Carla, to depart from the snares of death. So there's a snare of death, and then there is a snare of man. The fear of man begins to be a snare. That snare ends to death. But when I fear the Lord, there is a fountain of life. Remember how I told you guys, that vine that we're connected to, it gives us everything that we need pertaining to life and godliness. Everything that you need, type in the comments. I want everybody to confess this. Everybody that's on this live now and watching the replay, confess this. Everything I need is inside me. God, help me get it out. Jesus. That's what they messed up when I, when I heard that. They messed that. The enemy was messed up. His kingdom was in a, 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 a vulnerable place when I heard that. Because everything that I need is in me. All I got to do is get it out. God, let me unlock this thing. Let me get everything that you placed inside of me out of me. I got to be like Apostle Paul who says, I am now being offered up at the end of his life. He said, I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. Everything I needed to do, I got it out of me. I completed every assignment. I did what I was supposed to do in this earth. Now it's time for me to depart this place because everything I came here to do, I did it. I was like, Jesus, I finished the assignment. It is done. It is complete. I did everything that 
I was supposed to do. I gave everything that I had. I gave it everything that I could. I poured out everything that you placed on the inside of me. Why? Because I have a born I identity. And when I know that I am a seed in the earth, ready to flourish, I just got to get in the right soil. I just got to be connected to the right person to push it out of me, to help me birth this thing. Type in the comments, I need to get it out. I need to get that pastoral anointing out of me. I need to get that prophetic grace out of me. I need to get that intercessory grace out of me. I need to get that business out of me. I I need to get the creativity out of me. I need to get the dream interpretation out of me. I need to get this thing out of me. That book idea, that play that I'm supposed to write, everything that's in me, I have to get it out. It has to flourish. It has to come to maturity. It has to become something that others can eat from. Come on. It has to become something that produces other seeds. So he says, when you fear God, you accept who you are in Christ. You don't self-reject. Type in the comments, I don't reject self. A lot of people, because they may not look like Sherry Downs, they may not look like uh, Juanita Bynum. They may not look like T.D. Jakes. They reject who they are, but they're rejecting a seed because the seed has to flourish. The seed has to flourish. You have to give yourself time, Jacqueline, to be planted in the right soil. Type in the comments, I got to find the right place to grow. I got to find the right place to grow. That's why we've created a grow a coaching group mentorship. That's why we've created these things. So that book that's in you, we can help you get it out. So you need it in, to connect with Christ and knowing how to hear the voice of God, grow in who you are in God, begin to flourish in life, begin to walk in the spirit. We created this group coaching so we can aid you and assist you. This is my assignment from God to help coach and mentor women and men to get to their place of expressing who they are in God to live up to their fullest potential. That's why we are meeting April 28th and 29th to empower. I have other women who walk in destiny, who walk in their unique identity and their calling. I have business experts, creative experts, legacy experts, people who are uh, investors that are coming to Women of Weight 2023 that will empower you in your unique identity to be who called, who God has ordained for you to be. That's why we're doing this, to empower you, to edify the body of Christ, to push you to the next place, to create an atmosphere, an environment where you can be planted in who you are, encouraged and affirmed by Christ Jesus. Why? Because I am a part of the family of God, because I am a part of the kingdom of God. So what am I doing? I am allowing God to use me to empower those who are not as far in their journey as I am. Come on. So when we fear God, we accept who we are in Christ and we begin to journey in our identity, pulling out everything that's in us. God shows us ourselves in a dream or a prophetic word, or there's, there's a leading to start a business. There's a leading to do this. There's a leading to do that. We begin in our unique identity and know who we are in Christ and knowing that now that we in, are in Christ, even our ideas are sanctified so that we don't have to downplay our ideas or push our ideas away because we are in Christ Jesus. We have ideas of creativity, ideas of business, ideas to do things. All of those things will come to us when we are in Christ because our ideas are even sanctified. So John chapter 14, verse 26 says this, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my stead, in my authority, in my name, on my merit, he will begin to teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So he says this to them. Jesus is affirming them. He's saying, 
I, I've, I've taken you as far as I can. My assignment is coming to an end here. But the Holy Ghost is coming who is in my stead, who is uh, uh, going to comfort you. He's going to affirm you. He's going to encourage you. He's going to uh, uh, support you emotionally. He's going to comfort you. He's going to provide for you the grace and empowerment to do the rest of your assignment. He's going to empower you under trials and duress. He's going to empower you through spiritual warfare. When things come against you, when the enemy tries to hinder you, block you, stop you, throw monkey wrenches in the plan of God. The Holy Spirit is going to be there to achieve God's will. Now, some translations call him the advocate, the helper, the comforter, the paracletus, the, the aider, the one that comes alongside to assist. He's the one that properly uh, intercedes for you. He is a legal advocate who makes the right judgment call because he's close enough to the situation. That's the bomb right there. He is the legal advocate who makes the right judgment call because he's close enough to the situation. He is the one that's walking with us. He sees everything. He's close to the situation. He heard conversations. He knew how I responded. So he's able to make the right legal judgment. Where's that legal judgment, guys? In heaven, in the courts of heaven. He's able to say her heart was clean. She didn't respond that way. Her heart was, I vetted her heart. The spirit began to search her heart and the spirit began to see that there was no corrupt thing that proceeded out of her heart. There was no uh, revenge in her heart. There was nothing in her heart to allow the enemy to come in this door. So he is the advocate that, that is able to intercede on our behalf as a lawyer in court. He's giving evidence that stands up in court. He's pleading our case before the judge. The Holy Spirit, he helps to affirm us. He intercedes for us. He steps in as our advocate. He steps in as our legal assistant. He steps in as our defense attorney. He steps in as our counselor. Have you experienced the counsel of the Spirit? I have. It's the best thing you could ever experience. I caught myself trying to get a natural counselor. Everything she told me, the Holy Ghost had already told me. And I'm like, when she started telling me stuff, I'm like, I know. The Holy Ghost showed me. I know. The Holy Ghost told me. He already counseled me in that. <laughs> I just got to do it. <laughs> so he's a helper. He's an aider. He's an assistant. So the Holy Spirit takes the destiny walk with you. Type in the comments, I'm a destiny traveler. I'm a destiny traveler and I travel with the Holy Ghost. When you are in this life and connected to God, you are traveling to your destiny. Now you can make it there or not. The choice is yours. You can keep going until you reach the expected end or not. The choice is yours. But in Christ Jesus, he affirms you as his son and daughters. You don't have to struggle in who you call to be. There are people that he is giving you that to connect with and to for your unique journey. So there is a knowledge that the Holy Ghost has, that he comes alongside you in place of Christ. He takes us to the deeper knowledge of the gospel truth. He takes us to the deeper places. He takes us to deeper intimacy. He takes us to relational knowledge. He brings us into the depths of God. And he also gives us the divine strength that we need, which enables us to undergo trials, persecution on behalf of the divine kingdom. Why do you struggle in your born identity? You are a new creation in Christ. You don't have to struggle. Everything that you need is already given to you. Everything you need to succeed is already inside you. You just got to get in the right hands, the right environment, and be cultivated to grow and be allowed to flourish. Come to wow 
20 and 23 Women of Weight Conference, Hyatt Deerfield, Illinois. We have virtual seats. If you cannot attend in person, there are virtual options. I am called to assist you, to coach you, to push you, to help you to flourish, to help you, the seed of God, get everything out of you. There are books in many of you. There's creativity on the inside of you. There are business ideas. You're, you're not supposed to keep going in that business, that a career path. You are a new creation in Christ. There are new things that are in you that have to be unlocked. No longer being a babe, going on to maturity. We want you to be confident and rooted and established, affirmed, not looking at everybody saying, are you my mother? There is this children's book called, Are You My Mother? There's this little bird that is born and everything that comes up, everything, literally everything, share this video, everything that comes in his path. It's a bird now. So everything that comes in his path, a truck, other animals, other things, he, he's constantly saying, are you my mother? Are you my mother? Looking for a connection. Looking for identity. If this video spoke to you, you need to be at Wild Conference 20 and 23. Why am I saying that? Because the spirit of the Lord has me on these lives. There's a summons. If you heard this video, there's a summons for you to be at Wild 20 and 23. This is what I do. This is who I am. This is my identity in the body of Christ. I coach and I push. And I, I empower you to become who you were supposed to be before the foundations of the world, to flourish, to, to be that seed that is planted in the right soil. You just got to yield <laughs> and stay connected to the vine, Jesus Christ, in the body. As long as you do that, you're A-OK. -okay. okay, so he wants to get all of that out of us. He wants to help us in every facet of life. I have books that I've written that help empower you to pray, to overcome spiritual warfare, to overcome in your marriage, to overcome as a woman. Go to my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com. We have resources there that will give you information that was achieved by the spirit of God. When you know God in this way, you become rooted and you don't struggle in your identity, looking to everybody saying, are you my mother? Are you my mother? Who is my mother? You're looking at everybody. You're connecting to everybody as family. And everybody ain't family. Everybody ain't sis. Everybody is not a child of God. Everybody doesn't have that unique identity. Everybody doesn't carry what you need to be planted. Remember I told you, a seed in the hand of a businessman is just a seed. But a seed in the hand of a farmer is a flourishing tree. Come on, go to my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com. Be there virtually or be there in person. I implore you, you don't want to not be in the room. Get in the room. Holy Spirit is going to meet us there in a powerful way. Hyatt Deerfield, April 28th through the 29th. If you're looking for a coach, you're looking to connect to group coaching, go to my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com. Connect to our group coaching that empowers you, that inspires you, that pushes you to get everything that God placed on the inside of you, out of you. That's what we do. That's what we empower. We empower you to hear from God. We empower you to obey God. We empower you to follow the Holy Spirit. When you do that, we'll help you. We'll point out where God is so that you'll know you're not alone. He's walking with you. We'll tell you that's God. That's the Holy Spirit will affirm you through the Holy Spirit by Jesus Christ from the Father. Remember, you got to know what all three do in order to flow with them and operate in the supernatural. 
We love you with the love of the Lord and we love you with our love. I pray that this message finds you empowered. I pray that this message edifies you. I pray that this message pushes you to go deeper in the things of God and to actualize your unique identity that you will not struggle in who you have been called to be and what God placed on the inside of you. I pray that everything that God placed in you as that seed that you will begin to be planted and everything that's in you will be able to be pulled out of you as unique tree of righteousness that you are, that you may be planted by the rivers of water and bear fruit in every season and that your leaves will not wither. Be empowered destiny travelers while you're in route. I love you with the love of the Lord and I love you with my love. Be blessed.